Hey, what's up guys? Good to see you here again on Grassroots Gardening. I got my best buddy Cameron with me today and we are on the road headed to North Carolina. You guys are not going to want to miss this video. We're going to a really cool avian uh, technology center owned by one of my friends to pick up some aquatic plants, but we're also going to tour her little miniature zoo that she has at the house. So stay tuned to this one. You're not going to want to miss it. But we're going to be there in just about two hours now, so we're going to take you guys on the trip with us. Smell that fresh mountain air. And I swear if my hair looks like I have a toupee on like in the last video. So when Cameron and I did the uh, Amorpha Phallus, the corpse lily video, for some reason it looks like I have a toupee on. I do not have a toupee on. See so you guys, we just had to roll the windows down and get some of this fresh mountain air up here. It's a beautiful day. We just got to Carolina Avian Research Center. So uh, we're gonna go see Miss Leanne get the trailer backed in there probably take a little tour of her little zoo that she's built up here which is so cool and she even has a baby barn owl I saw on Facebook so we're gonna see some really awesome stuff inside so let's get out go see Miss Leanne and take the tour all right guys well, we finally made it up here to Miss Leanne's we are in Fletcher North Carolina at Carolina Avian Research Center Did and I get the name right? Carolina Avian Research and Education and, and education carebird.org there you go and so before i even get started in the description below i'll put all the links to their instagram facebook all that good stuff so just check the description below we'll have all the links go check out her instagram this place is amazing you're about to see some really cool and very rare birds very so, rare so tell me how long you've been here you know and you got so ryan i bought this purpose? property five years ago yeah. and it was a pasture there wasn't a house, there wasn't any grass, no trees, no, no bushes. Nothing. There was nothing. It was a blank slate. Well, you have been hard at work then, because this place, where do you guys see it? It is absolute, I mean, it's like a zoo. It is a small zoo and a botanical garden combined. Yeah, it's amazing. So what's the purpose behind the center? Just to educate folks, yeah. obviously, and to, do you rescue? birds do you help them out what is the we help purpose? them out yeah so we take in a lot of rare birds that have special needs okay so like jack like jack 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 was born in a breeding facility um, in oregon and they bred falconry birds for falconers and he had an accident and lost an eye and yeah. because of that he couldn't breed anymore because he couldn't hold his balance right so they said he's not going to make us any more money so he has to go and I, they so, called, and I said, of course we'll take them. And Jack is a really cool Harris? Harris's. Harris's. Hawk. Hawk. From the American Southwest there. Desert. Yeah, he is so, so cool. She's got, you will not believe the birds that you're about to see. So we're just going to do a brief little walk around. Obviously, you guys know we're here just to pick up the aquatic plants, but this place is so cool. And Miss Leanne was kind enough just to give us a few minutes to give us the tour here. So let's go walk around and see some of these amazing creatures. And so, Miss Leanne, we're coming up to this little building here where we can absolutely do not open this door. What's this place here? So, because there's so many animals that live on the property, occasionally someone gets a boo-boo. Yep. Um, or they get sick. Um, so, they have to go into the clinic. Gotcha. So, this is a clinic for the animals that live here. Okay. It also has a full kitchen in it because all of the very complicated meals sure. are made inside and then delivered to the birds waitress style by me wow. twice a day. You sure do have a passion. I do have for, a passion. For these birds, because I mean, this place, 
How many acres do you, you have right It's only here? two acres. But it is loaded. But I'm surrounded by these beautiful mountains in beautiful Cane Creek Valley. It is absolutely gorgeous. So Cameron and I, when we got into the mountains, we had to let the windows down in the truck just to let that fresh it's mountain wonderful, air. isn't it? And, and you, you've got the optimal growing zone right here, in my personal opinion, because <laughs> you can grow just about anything up here. It's just perfect. Yeah, the only problem is we're getting more and more late freezes yeah. these days. That's and too. late freezes can be a disaster for they, the garden. They can do some damage, Yeah, for sure. Now right here, we, we came here just a few minutes ago. We've got a few of the ponds. We put the pump in there, so we're pumping down a couple of the ponds while we do our little tour. So this is where Jack is, and is there anybody living in this cave? So this is our new Birds of Prey exhibit. Okay. So within here, um, we have Jack the Harris's hawk. We have the future home of some screech owls oh, over there. Oh, you're gonna there. get some screech owls? Yes. Oh, they love those. And then we have Jason the barn owl that's going to move in here when he's old enough. And he's the one we may get lucky enough you to see You might get to meet him in him. a few minutes, yes. Okay. I think I could do that for you. Awesome. He's so cute. He is cool. I, saw, well, I haven't seen him live yet, but his pictures are just amazing. Yeah. So. All right, awesome. Well, and then you let the turkeys out. What type of turkeys? And they're running around just so these free turkeys range, right? are from our heritage livestock exhibit, which is one of our five exhibits that are here at Carolina Avian Research and Education. Okay, we want to teach people about the importance of our heritage livestock and how vital they are to our safety in the future. Yeah, absolutely. Because if we lose these modern hybrids that we have created through the years, uh -huh. we need to rebuild them with the foundation stock, which are the heritage animals. So those are kind of like our root stock. They of, are the root of, stock, of absolutely. Uh, that's amazing. Yeah. And I hear a couple of them. I just heard them clucking. Oh, there they are. So they just free range out here. Miss Leanne just let them out just a well, little I while Well, I let ago. them out for story time. Right. So they need a lot of attention at this age. So the way I accomplish that with a lot of the animals is I read children's stories to them. Really? Yes. And, and so that just helps them, um, you know, just stay more calm or what's more the benefit of just having human interaction? The interaction and, and me talking to them the whole time. And maybe I'll sit down in the bench in a little bit and you'll see how they gather around for story time. Okay, I would love to see that. These hey, are Narragansett turkeys. Narragansett? Narragansett. That is the first breed that was ever created in the New World. Is that right? back in the 1700s. And so how do you go about finding these? Animals? They came from a hatchery in California. Yeah? Yep. Wow, that is really, really interesting. Look how curious these little guys are. This breed is known to be very friendly and curious. <laughs> it's so cute. Hey, little guy. Hey, how are you today? You, you like the camera? Well, this one ain't camera shy, is he? Not at all. <laughs> That's so cool. Let's so, see. We're going to go into the waterfowl exhibit. Right. And I'm going to see what happens with the starlings, first of all. So let's walk right through. Okay. Don't stop. Go right in. Gotcha. Don't stop. Okay. Keep going. Hold on. Okay. Okay. I'm going to work the doors. Gotcha. I love and, how you have it set up so nobody can get out. Um, the federal government makes us do that. Is that right? Yes. Because they don't want exotics released out into... That's right. So Ryan, these yes. are probably the rarest birds on the property. Yeah. These are emerald starlings from Africa. Oh, they're beautiful. They haven't been imported for a very long time. And the few that are in private hands in the United States are dwindling in numbers. We don't think that there's 10 of them left. Really? That in few? In private hands, right. Wow. So they, this pair just produced their first baby, and that's him sitting below the two of them. Oh, okay. He's so a he's, little that's darker. That's the male, and then the females are the, the emerald green. The two emerald green ones above uh -huh. are, are the male and female. Oh, okay. The dark one is the baby. Oh, how about that? Look at the iridescence. Look at that there. when the sun hits them. I know, it's beautiful. 
So they use that coloration when they're performing a murmurization. Murmurization? Murmurization is when you see starlings fly in a flock. Oh, yeah. And then yeah. they quickly turn into another direction. Right, and they all do. And that iridescent color confuses any aerial predators oh. that might be chasing them. I learned something new today. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We're going to head into the savanna exhibit now. Okay. This is another new exhibit. Savannas are grasslands. Right. They're very, very important to our world ecosystem. And they are they can, found only in Africa or are they in different areas? Savannas are throughout the world. Okay. Sometimes they're wet, sometimes they're very dry. Okay, I always pictured them dry, you know, when I hear yeah. think of Savannah in Africa. Well, actually, when you think about the beautiful city of Savannah, Georgia, yeah. it's surrounded by wet savannas. Okay. Yeah. I did not know that. That's how they got the name Savannah, for their name of their right. town. Makes sense. So the first bird you're going to see when we walk into this exhibit is Zuri. Zuri means beautiful girl in Swahili. Yeah, well, she is a beautiful girl. And what, and what kind of bird is it? Zuri is an East African crown crane. Wow. And look at her top dress. That is for camouflage. Okay. Hold, Zuri. Hold. She's getting a little bit excited. Hold, Zuri. Hold. Come on, Zuri. So you'll notice the crown, the beautiful crown that Zuri wears. That is to camouflage her because she'll make her nest on the ground in the savannas in Africa where she's sharing her environment with lions and leopards. Okay. And so camouflage is camouflage really important. Camouflage is very, very important for that species. And so what's she doing now? Is she upset because I'm in here with the She's camera? not really upset. She's she's feeling stimulated. Right. She she loves to play and um, she's so also she watching the baby turkeys who are coming with us and She's very excited about babies. Yeah, and so she's just excited as all. Yeah, she's excited. And now what, a, can you tell us anything about her diet or like? Yeah, so in the wild, they're going to eat a lot of grains and berries in the savannas <laughs> and grasses and snakes and lizards. Wow, okay. And so what do you feed her? So she gets a very special program, a nutritional program that has been worked on by veterinarians and she has specialty crane pellets that are made for her and lots of vegetables and fruits and corn and berries. Wow. <laughs> Man, I tell you what, it, 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 you must go through a lot of food, and you, yes. when you talk about specialty diets, I mean, yeah. it's down to the individual bird here. Yes. That's so cool. She's absolutely gorgeous. Let's talk about these geese. Okay. What's, what's special so, about these geese? These beautiful geese that are in here with Zuri are barnacle geese. Barnacle geese. From Russia. And in the 1500s, the Catholic Church decided it was okay for people to eat them on Friday because they're obviously a fish. <laughs> okay, <laughs> yeah. that's interesting. In, in reality, of course, they're a goose, but right. they were never able to find their nest. And the reason they couldn't find their nest is because they had to hide from polar bears and foxes and lots of predators. So the only safe place to nest was 500 feet up a cliff side. Oh, no way. And that's why they could never find their nest. Wow. Now, if you can imagine being a baby barnacle goose one day old, and your mom and dad just flew down to the savanna, and they're calling you to join them. And you're... You're about to make the biggest leap of faith that you'll yeah, ever make life. in your life. Wow. Man, I thought wood ducks had it scary, but yeah. that sounds a lot. Sounds, a lot, a lot, lot of them scary. don't make it on the way down, I unfortunately. can imagine. That's, that's 500 feet is way up there. This is so cool, Miss Leanne. The other birds that you see in the hutch over here that are having lunch is the American bobwhite quail that yeah. was so important to our early settlers. Oh, yeah. And they've become endangered because of the introduced fire ants that eat their babies, the babies as they're yeah. hatching. And we've had trouble with wild turkeys in our area, and the quail population has been decimated. A matter of fact, you know, my dad, I've showed a video not too long ago, my dad raises 
uh, white-tailed rabbits as well as bobwhite quails. Mm -hmm. And uh, they were very important way back when. Absolutely. And they, and they were everywhere. And I used to hear them when I was a boy, and now you just don't, Never hear, them. Hear, them. You don't hear them anymore. There's also a fulvis, a North American fulvis whistling duck. Oh, yeah, it's see made her. a nest She's over here nest. behind this grass. So if you guys, if you could look at right at the end of my finger there. You can approach you can her see. a little bit more. Okay, well, we'll just go as far as you say we we can because I don't want to disturb her. But yeah, she's got her a little Yeah, we'll, we'll stop about there. Okay. This beautiful mural that you see represents that area where the savanna stops and the forest begins. This beautiful mural was painted by world-famous muralist Ian Wilkinson, who That's did it as a gift. Wow, what a gift. Yeah, it's quite is, lovely, isn't is it? That is so cool. You've got your water lilies even painted in oh, there. Oh, yeah. That's He's beautiful. amazing. Yeah. You might be a little too close to it. It actually looks better yeah, further away. Yeah, bit. let's back up a little bit. That is so cool, Miss Leanne. Does he live around here, this artist? He's actually um, in Asheville, North Carolina, which okay. is just a few minutes away. But I think he goes all over the world wow. to paint. That is really something. Maybe I can get him down to grassroots. We want to do some murals on the side of our building, and we've just talked about it recently. So I will get you his contact. Get me his contact. We'll see yeah. what we can make happen. All right. Awesome. Well, why don't we walk into the jungle exhibit? Okay. So all of the birds have access to their own rooms that they can come and go from. And it looks like these birds just wanted to get out of the sun for a little bit and cool off inside. Right. And what, these what are, are we looking at? Yeah, these are blue crowned pigeons from Indonesia. Wow. Look at Largest that pigeon in the world. That is so neat. And these are the ones that we heard making a drumming noise yes. a little earlier. Wow, look at all these guys. And what are these, Miss Lee? Oh, these are, let's see, there's some small Borks parakeets up there from Australia, and I see some Lady Gouldian finches. Oh, there's a red-faced parrot finch. Oh, look how small he is, but the colors yeah. are just amazing. They what come in the and they eat a little, and then they go back out and play. Are these some type of cockatiel? Yeah, those are Borks parakeets okay. from Australia. Oh, that's the Borks. And see, when they've had enough to eat, then they just go out through this window and look what they fly into. And that's where we get to go next. We're gonna go to the right. This is absolutely incredible. Let me just follow Look you. at the female Lady Gouldian's finch. She's oh, built a yeah. nest in that log. Oh yeah, and the one with the red beautiful. face, she is gorgeous. They're endangered in Australia because of an air sac mite that was introduced by man. It crawls into their lungs and chokes them. Oh no. Yeah. You want me to follow you? I don't want yeah. to go anywhere where I shouldn't. Okay, stay real close. Okay, I'll stay close to you. <laughs> this is so cool, you guys. It's literally like There's being the inside a zoo. There's three starlings again. Oh, check him out. Hurry. Oh, wow. That, that is an African weaver bird. Okay. Is he the one that builds the huge Yeah, nest? they make a beautiful nest. And um, if the female doesn't like it, she'll just come by and destroy it, and he'll have to start <laughs> all over again from scratch. How sweet of her. How sweet of her. <laughs> <laughs> These are shaft tail finches that you see right here. Yeah. And there's another Borks right next to them. I like the Borks. That is yeah, really they're beautiful, cool. aren't they? Yes. This is just really incredible what you have built here. Okay. And look at these beautiful bromeliads and oh, orchids. I love the bromeliads. And the mosses. Oh, there goes an African tambourine dove. Wow. It's so neat how you've built this big aviary and they've got so much room and it's just like they're in their native habitat almost, you mm -hmm. know, it's a miniature ecosystem and water to play in yep you got your beautiful fountain out here you've done just an amazing, amazing thank you job ryan here. thank it's, you it's just unreal i don't think i would ever leave here it is very difficult to leave this exhibit it's just so peaceful 
It is. And up here in this mountain air, it's just nice and cool today. Thank goodness, because we got a bunch of plants to move. Yeah. But it's just the, one of the most peaceful and serene places that I've ever visited. This is just, uh, it's mind blowing. Here's a bromeliad getting ready to bloom. Oh, sure is, isn't it? That alocasia you brought me, I'm gonna plant it right there to the neck, to the left of that black. Oh, to the Eucara? Eucara. Yeah, so I brought Miss Leanne, one of my absolute favorite plants that I talk about all the time. I love that one because that one is Coffee Cups Colocasia. Y'all have heard me mention it a gazillion times. It catches the rain. When it gets filled up enough, it tips, pours it out. Like a stand. lotus. Yeah, it's <laughs> unreal. I love them. So I brought Miss Leanne one, and Ooh. so she's going to plant it up. Over here. here we see a beautiful red-faced parrot finch from Indonesia. Oh, yeah. So if you guys can see him up in that little tree right there. Red he's kind of tucked up in there, but he's got the red face and throat. Oh, look at that beautiful weaver bird up there. Oh, yeah. There's so much to look at till you just There's you several of those everything. in here. I know, it's just an... Oh, there's another... Look, there's another um, parrot finch. <laughs> and, and the turkeys. They're our, always trying to follow our, me. Our turkey friends. Are they imprinted on you? They are. Yeah, so they're trying to follow Mama around. That's so cool. Ryan, I see a rice bird from India over here to the right. Oh, yeah. Looks like a little puffin. It does look like a little puffin that I see. Oh, in the way back, there's a blue-gray tanager far in the back, upper left, upper right. Yep, I see it. Isn't he beautiful? That oh, there's so two of them, cool. look. Yep, they're up on that stick. Oh, and to their right, I see a red-rumped parakeet. Ooh, and really rare <laughs> above that, there is a red-crested taraco. If you take a step forward, You'll see them through the leaves. I'm guiding you forward. Okay. Can you start to see their red and blue and green feathers? I can. I hope the, I hope the GoPro is picking it all up because they, the colors are just magnificent. They're going to come shooting out of there pretty quick. Yeah. Hopefully you guys can see that. Maybe if I get down a little bit. Oh, there we go. Now, what are those called? Those are red-crested taracos. Wow, now that's cool. They've got the red mohawk. And I'm sure the camera doesn't do it justice, but the iridescence of that emerald Oh, look green. in front of you. There's a beautiful diamond dove on a nest. Oh, yeah, I didn't even see Look that. at that. Is and she, she's sweet. She's on eggs, you reckon? Oh, yeah, probably. Wow. How many birds you got in here, you think? Oh, I think in this exhibit there's about 40, 45 birds. Wow. This is so cool. Stay in here all the time. I would you like know to. I love birds. I, and I know so you love I would tropical just put, plants. I would, I would just put me a little stool. But then right nothing would more. get done. I know. That's and there's, my, that's my there's a lot of animals here with a lot of needs. And look at them. They're waiting for their story. <laughs> They're ready for story time. Mom, read us a they book. They really enjoy story time. Yeah. Well, maybe um, maybe we can go do that. We'll see. Minute. Maybe we'll read us some Babar the Elephant to them. <laughs> okay. <laughs> can I follow you? Yeah, come on. Oh, here's a good up close of them. That's my favorite. Can you see them? Yeah. If I have a baby available, I'll let you know. Yes, please do. That is a really beautiful bird. They've got just pretty much every color under the rainbow, don't they? Yeah. Good footage. Thank you for letting us. Absolutely. Here. Oh, look at the spot breasted Oriole. Oh, yeah. That's a rare bird. He's pretty. And Ziri's still out here doing her thing, isn't she? She is. She is showing out today. Looks like we've Do got you some... want to see if she'll pose story time? Yeah. Maybe if you stand over there, okay. we'll see if she'll come up. Zuri, you want to do story time? Do you want to do story time? You remember we were talking about Babar the bear, I mean Babar the elephant. 
and how he was very happy that his son Zuri's more interested in the camera right now. I don't now want her getting too close than, to you. She can something. really hurt you. Yeah, that's what I was, <laughs> I was kind of thinking that too. Zuri, let's go. Okay. Let's go. Yeah, she's, she's a little bit too excited for story that time. That middle toe is what they use to attack elephants. So oh. let's, let's keep going. Well, I'm glad you told me that. Um, after. After. Yeah. You can open that. Okay. Gladly. I'll, I'll, open, the, <laughs> I'll open the door and get out of there now. Oh, that's funny. Good? Yeah, thank you for not telling me that uh, as soon as we went Do in. Do you want to try to get the, them? I'll sit there and they'll come up and start playing. Okay. Babies, come to me. Babies, come. Come on, babies. I'm right here. Come on. Here they here come. Here they come. <laughs> You babies ready for story time? Oh my goodness, that is too funny. Come on. Everybody come on up. Huh? Come on. How many what? we got total? Um, five. Five, okay. One, two, three. Yep, they're all. You guys want all... some story time? Come on. Let's come on up. They're interested in what Cameron's doing over there. Well, if they won't play, they won't play. Yeah. I don't think they're gonna. Everybody's too excited with the new visitors. There's a lot of excitement There's today. There's a lot going on today. You want, you want to meet Jason? Yeah. Oh, we got to meet Jason. Yeah. The barn owl, right? Yep. Can Cam come too? Sure. Come on, Cam. You know you want to see the barn owl eat a mouse. Hey, that punt worked out pretty good, didn't it? Ooh, look at what we have right here. All right, guys, so we get all access backstage passes today only. And we are now inside the lab area. And what do we have there? Those are Australian crested doves. Oh, wow. Aren't they something? They are cool. I've never seen any dove look like that. That is really, can I get a little closer? You, you can try, you can try. I just don't want to make them freak out or anything. Those are beautiful. So I'm going to, um, I'm going to sit here. Okay. And I'll just be loving on Jason for a few minutes. I'm going to put him on a towel. Yep. I'll be out in a minute. Stop it. <laughs> the turkeys are out there just to chirp. Hi, Jason. Hi. Let's see if there's a... I can't see them, but I can hear them out there. I don't know where their mom's at. Here's a nice now, Can mouse. I walk over to the box? I'm, I'm going to get them out okay. of it. Okay, all right. And so Jason is the... Is it an Eastern Barn Owl? American Barn Owl. American Barn Owl. Jason. Jason. Whoa. Hey, baby. Oh, no way. Now you tell me how close you want me. Okay, to. give me a minute. Sure. I'm going to get him situated. And that's his lunch right there. Yep. And do you you have do you raise the mice here too or do you So no, buy that's that's part of our food bill. Ryan, Whoa. this is Jason. He's so cool. Wow, I don't. You know, I've never even seen a barn owl, like an adult, out in the wild. I love owls. He's he's three and a half weeks old. Yeah. And how'd you come about getting him? He came from a facility in West Virginia, and um, he's going to be used for education. And um, we're going to see if he'll take a mouse. Yeah. Hopefully. I don't know if he will, because. He yeah. might be a little shy. Okay, well, hopefully. Hey, Jason. 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 You want to eat that mouse or play with the mouse? You want to oh, eat it? So neat looking. Come on, Jason. Be hungry. Wow. He's obsessed with your camera. I see. So he's probably not going to eat. Well, that's all right if you it's want. It's okay. 
So these are pin feathers that you see that are coming in and they're very itchy right now. Okay. So I spent a lot of time rubbing them and scratching them and he enjoys it. I see. Now, they're nocturnal, so do you have to feed him at night time? Or does so he, this, you got him on this time, time in right his, now? this time in his life, he pretty much wants to be fed around the clock. Okay. So, so. he's eating about seven mice a day. Wow. I know. <laughs> So you, you're staying up all hours of the night. Oh, I come and go. Yeah. <laughs> I know all about that with feeding Larry when he was little, Mama Call. Yeah. Having to feed him every three hours and that's some hard weeks there when they're <laughs> young like this. But it's worth it. Now, I always think of the barn owl having a flat face. Well, his feathers just kind of grow yeah. into Yeah, and beak. you can see where it's starting. Yeah. And it'll be more accentuated the bigger he gets. Wow. That is so neat. Now when he does eat, if he were to eat the mouse, he just tosses that. So they're gonna swallow it whole, yep, and then, head first, yep. and they eat the feathers and the bones, and, and they can't really digest those. Right. So they're going to regurgitate them yep. in the form of a pellet mm -hmm. that they need to spit out a couple times a day. Right, that's so unusual. But we have, uh, me and my dad have found owl pellets in the woods and it's just a bunch of bones. Yeah. So they get all the nutrients. A lot of calcium, of, yeah. Out they... of whatever they're eating. Well, wouldn't you know it, guys, just as soon as Jason got ready to toss back that mouse, the damn camera said it's overheated and it's shutting down. So came all this way. That's really what I wanted to see. And I got to see it. Unfortunately, you guys didn't. So sorry about that. But hey, that's Murphy's hey, Law. Hey, they'll have to come here and see Jason in person. There you go. All the more reason to get your butts here in person to check out Jason eat his mouse. It was so cool. He just took that thing, threw it back, and then down the hatch it went. But now we're going to go walk down through Miss Leanne's uh, wildflower garden meadow and, and meadow and down to you call it lake little leanne? lake little lake leanne little and lake we're gonna leanne. sit on the dock of love and knowledge yeah let's go here we go oh look who's following <laughs> us oh yeah here they come <laughs> come on guys can they come down to the pond or they to, can to little lake leanne they can wow look at your wildflower meadow yeah it's you really all this from great. seed everything is from seed wow everything i did myself you stay busy, don't you, girl? I do stay busy. Wow. There's some extravagant this. looking, wonderful flowers in here. That is really something else. Some love. prairie cone flower here. A lot here. of coreopsis. Yeah. So, Miss Leanne, what is the tall white right there in the middle? Yeah, so that's fleabane. That's a nice flea native. Bane. And then we've got some Rebecca, Black Eyed Susans, yep. different forms of that, some Gallardia which is one of my favorite wildflowers. Um, this some is prairie fantastic. cone flower waving in the wind. Yeah, I have in front not, of not seen that before. That's another nice so native. Is that a form of Echinacea? No, no, not related at all. Oh, wow. Mm -mm. And this really? is some native thistle. Oh, yeah, that's so cool. Check that out. That will have beautiful purple flowers. Yeah. Pretty mean looking looking plant though. Yeah, but it, it will is, have isn't it, it, it oh will boy. have it will have beautiful flowers on Some it. Some bachelor buttons to your left. Oh yeah. Absolutely gorgeous. And of course we teach wildflower gardening here. Oh do you? At Carolina Avian Research and Education because we want to educate people on helping the environment. Yep. And this is pollinator month. It is. So what a more fitting place to be. Look at down, our pollinators right here. here. Yep, everybody's busy little bees. And people, you know, don't understand the importance of adding pollinators to their yard, but you've gone one step further and done native yeah. pollinators. Not lots. everything is native. I'm not very strict that way. Right, me either. Um, I, I will use non-natives as long as they are beneficial to wildlife and if they're not invasive. Right, that's the important part. Wow, look. This at, is Little Lake Leanne. Oh, man, that's so cool. Look at those lilies out there to oh, your yeah. right. Now, are those some of yours? Uh, let's like, see. So you hybridize lilies too, right? Yeah, I do. No, none of mine are in here. Mine, Most of mine were tropical from when I lived in the south. Oh, uh, when you were down in Florida. In, yeah, down in Florida. In Florida days. 
And I we do sell this, but I forget the name. Purple pickerel. Pickerel, that's right. It's a wonderful native plant. And look at the magnificent um, butterfly weed. Yep. And the, the, the milkweed. The, the milkweed. Yep. Um, and, and so you'll probably have some monarchs. Oh, absolutely. Come visit Every you. year. But you know, we're getting a lovely little light shower. Yep, getting a little nice, nice shower. Hopefully not too much as bless her heart Cameron's up there working uh, getting the aquatics gathered up in the ponds drained so I'm just out here lollygagging enjoying this absolutely beautiful um, zoological exhibit that you have created here you know I had to make a decision Ryan I wasn't able to maintain the nursery and maintain the zoological part of this place. I so, can see why it's a lot. Yeah, and I'm the only one that works here. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so the birds have to come first, sure. and they always do. So um, that's why I reached out to you and yeah. thought, you know, it would be a great place for for this small business well, to go. Well, we we appreciate you doing so, and so our plan with these aquatics, Miss Leanne's got some really neat stuff. Our plan is to take these aquatics back. Some of them might be for sale, you know, right off the bat, but a lot of these are going to be stocked, just like we were talking with the turkeys, you know, mm -hmm. some of this, these plants that you have, it's important to kind of, you know, have that root stock. So we're going to propagate a lot of this material and that way we can continue to offer it to homeowners and plant lovers alike. But speaking of, I better get my butt back up the hill before Cameron comes down here and beats me up because I'm just got her working her little tail off by herself up there but miss leanne i want to tell you thank you so much for just giving us that amazing behind the scenes it was tour. my pleasure and uh, and to show all the folks on here so we're again we're in fletcher north carolina not far from Asheville. just I mean, a few minutes yeah. really easy to get to so if you're in the southeast and come anywhere nearby check out carolina avian research, research and education, education carebird.org carebird.org so check them out come see this amazing thing meet this wonderful lady miss leanne we appreciate you guys watching so much and always remember the more you know the more you grow we'll see you on the next video Love guys it.